Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store, where I've compiled some of the very best items available, including some of my own personal recommendations. Thanks! What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Giant Mouse Ace Sonoma. Uh, a beautiful, beautiful, I am a big fan. So if you go back, every time I talk about like knives that really, really attract me, I love a simple aesthetic. This is close to as simple as it gets with a few small details, you know, in the, in the simplicity that accentuate uh, some of the, the pleasing complexities. We'll talk about that. Wonderful knife. Um, this knife is uh, made, is manufactured. It's not, not manufactured in the United States. It's manufactured by Riot. I was surprised. You know, when I picked this up, I thought, this feels really good. And, and I thought, it's probably we, but this feels really, really good. So I went and checked it out. And as far as I can gather from their website, yeah, it's manufactured by Riot, which would explain that little extra uh, you know, that goes into it. I named Riot as one of the most precision manufacturers that exist when it comes to folding knives. Um, yeah, they're not in the United States, but rest assured, if you want um, if you want a folding knife that's manufactured to absolute perfection when it comes down to the fine details of everything, Riot does it right. Absolutely. So, anyways, uh, this was sent to me by my good friend and patron, Hunter L. Uh, Hunter, thank you so much for sending this along with many others. Um, it's because of people like him that I'm able to bring you guys this type of daily content. It's also because of my patrons in general. So thank you so much for supporting me right now. If you'd like to check out my Patreon and uh, get your hands on some of those cool stickers and uh, find out uh, what the other exclusive benefits are, there is a link right down there in the description. The support would mean the world to me. Let's go ahead and get a measurement here. We're coming in at about 7. Point, it's like 7.8 inches overall. Blade length, 3.5. Uh, cutting edge, 3.5. Quarter, maybe just shy. It's got a pretty generous forward twirl there. Three, um, three point two maybe on the cutting edge. How about some size comparisons? Up against the Ontario Rat Model One, Rat One coming in at eight point six inches overall. So this is not a small knife, but it's a slender knife with a shorter profile, um, which is going to be appealing right off the bat to a lot of people. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? PM2 is coming in at eight point three inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Group Tillion, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, the Ritter Hogue coming in uh, at eight inches overall. So just a little bit longer there than the uh, Ace Sonoma. And uh, last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Spyderco Para 3 coming in at seven and a quarter inches overall. How's the action on the sky? This was one of the things that kind of tipped me off that it might be, you know, somebody, somebody else. The action is really good considering we have a blade that's not heavy, not tall, right? Uh, it takes a little, just a little bit of encouragement to get it down, but there's no friction in there. And the action feels very snappy and very solid. Um, I don't know how to describe the little differences between some of the flipping action or what I expect for the overall profile and materials used, weight of the profile, uh, or weight of the blade, weight of the body, um, and, and what differs in my mind. I, I can't explain it. But every now and then, you know, there's, there's a little bit of difference in solidity. It's not always just how much or how little friction there is inside of the pivot, but it's so, sometimes it's the little noises um, that it makes when it locks out or just the feeling of things clicking into place, but this feels really, really good. It's not fall shut or anything like that, but it's, it is good. Just, it's just a little bit. This is very, very smooth, nice and clicky. The um, flipper tab, you kind of come at it at an angle. You can push button it if you want to and, I suppose if you wanted to, you could also light switch it, but it's it's truthfully, it's just comfortable to lay your finger down and flip it. Something you'll run into, it's any any narrow frame, you know, that's that's a frame lock, you gotta really make sure you keep your fingers off that lock bar. Either rest them on the pocket clip um, or make sure that you're kind of cat's pawing back up on the frame and you're gonna flip it. It is something you kind of have to get used to with a flipper like this that's, that's narrow, um, but the, the action is excellent. I have no issue with that whatsoever. Let's go ahead and do the hardware check. Uh, get out my handy dandy WIA magnetic driver and WIA bit selector. Two items that are extremely inexpensive and extremely recommendable. You can find them down in the Amazon store that I referenced at the beginning of every single knife review. Uh, just pull open the link and look for knife maintenance. I'm going to guess, excuse me, uh, I'm going to guess that the pivot is a T8, which we're going to check real quick. That is the case. And I'm, I think these are probably T6, but we're going to check with a T8. 
Yeah, these are going to be T6. Um, same thing I always say. T6 isn't a deal breaker, but I sure wish it was T8 uh, because it would save my bits. And well, now, wait a sec. What have I got here? What have I got here? That's a T6. It's, it's not a T6. Did I? Am I just wrong? Okay, we're going to come at this with the T8 again. Oh, gosh, I am wrong. It is a T8. <laughs> I'm glad I checked again. T8, guys. Boy, those are some deceptive T8. Well, case in point, so I think a lot of manufacturers steer away from T8 because they're worried that the larger head size will pull away from the design. Um, these are T8s, and I thought they were T6. So they don't pull away from the design at all. So that's wonderful. Um, looks like the pocket clip even is T8. Yeah, absolutely. So there you go. Those are T8 screws. There's only two of them, and, well, I'll bet you... Well, no, those look like T8 as well. It looks like T8 across the board. Nice job, Riyadh. That is wonderful. Full disassembly of this knife, uh, capable with a single T8 bit. So, fantastic. Um, how about carry profile? Let's go ahead and do uh, carry for profile and weight. Let's go ahead and um, measure the blade stock thickness. Blade stock thickness coming in at 140 thousandths. Not too thick, not too thin. It's kind of the right, it's kind of where I like it. It depends on the blade, but you know, it's kind of a nice dependable thickness and you can still get down to a, a pretty thin edge. This is solid titanium. Curiously, it's not milled out. Um, I, I don't care, but I think a lot more people would appreciate this design considering one of the benefits is the fact that it's so slender. It probably would appreciate having a little bit less weight on the guy. It comes in at not anything crazy, 3.56 ounces. It's still almost exactly an ounce and inch for you sticklers out there. Um, no offense, I'm just, you know, people, if you want to go buy the whole ounce and inch thing, then there you go, but it would have been even lighter had they milled it out. Um, it's not that big of a deal. I, I don't care. I regularly carry knives that are heavier, so it is what it is. Um, up against the Spyderco Para 3 in terms of thickness, yeah, it's exactly, like, it's exactly the same thickness as Para 3. In terms of height, it's, it easily has both you know, the PM2 and Para 3. I use them as an example because they're two knives that have awkward carry profiles and nobody ever complains about them. Overall height, now nah, blows it away. Very, very slender profile. Um, and then length, actually, it looks like it's got comparable length to the Spyderco uh, Para 3, maybe a little longer, but definitely shorter uh, overall than the Spyderco PM2. And despite all of these having choils, I think... Yeah, it's got the exact same cutting edge as the PM2. Um, maybe, is it? It's very close. Yeah, it's the exact same cutting edge and definitely more cutting edge than the Para 3. Um, while still wearing, I think, almost exactly the same as the Spyderco Para 3 G10. But this is solid titanium. So there you go. Uh, a lot of material, you know, a lot less material when you have a blade that's not um, so tall. So anyways, yeah, the flipper tab also is not, not obtrusive at all. So I wouldn't call that a pocket pecker um, or anything. I, keep, I, I, I reference a lot of things that Nick Shabazz talks about, and that's because I watch a lot of Nick Shabazz. <laughs> I love Nick Shabazz reviews. Way before I started this channel, I was watching him like many of you guys, so I picked up on a lot of his stuff, I guess. But yeah, let's go ahead and talk about the overall uh, anatomy and materials here. So we're looking at titanium and M390. But yeah, it looks nice. And we have a nice uh, pivot collar around the outside of this domed pivot. That's nice. It's a simple detail, but it goes a long way. Add some color and flair. We've got a bronze titanium backspacer, bronze titanium pocket clip, and this beautifully, nearly fully flat ground blade that really is kind of reminiscent of um, Shir Gorov. Very, very clean. The only thing that's on it is Ace and M390. Um, I, it's not a, it's not a, a big billboard or anything like that. I'm just trying to imagine how clean this would look without that logo. That logo is not bad. It's very simple. I don't mind it. I'm just, I can't help but imagine it because again, I love, I love the aesthetic of this knife. It's so beautiful and straightforward. It's such a classic blade shape, classic handle, right? This design is in one way, shape or form been used by how I mean like every knife maker probably ever it's a very classic design but man it just looks good and it's still a full-size knife got a nice forward choil here it's kind of what I'd consider to be a second knuckle choil you you do start to run the risk of running your finger up the blade but first knuckle yeah no problem second one and eh, warning signs and up here no you're gonna cut yourself but 
It's great. No double clutch. Because of the curvature of this, the slope of the flipper tab, despite the fact that it's jimped, uh, you might sometimes slip it past your finger, in which case the choil is barely going to catch if you don't get your thumb out of the way. Um, so it's not a double clutch, but it's an interesting situation where the flipper tab can actually slip past your finger. You'll adapt to it. Not that big of a deal, um, considering the shape of the flipper tab and how convenient it is to approach. Remember, this is how we approach all the different... This is every possible way. Um, I'm just speeding it up. Every possible way you could approach a flipper tab, right? So considering how... <laughs> I'm kidding, by the way. Considering how you approach that or where you put your finger naturally, I mean, I'll, I'll take that. I'll just adapt to the, the slope on the flipper tab. Um, the uh, By the way, edges all knocked down. You're going to... That's... You're gonna, you can expect that with Riot. It's just going to be the case. The blade is just wonderful. It's so simple. Because it's 140,000 uh, uh, crown spine, by the way, wonderful. It means, you know, for anybody who doesn't know, round it up here. Uh, because it is 140,000, despite it's, it's almost fully flat ground, it still doesn't have a lot of room to drop towards the edge. So it's got a, it's got a, you know, a reasonable edge at the end, but it, it's not a laser beam, right? Um, in terms of, you know, EDC tasks, oh, I mean, it's definitely going to slice. It's definitely going to cut, right? You know, but if you're looking for the most perfectly uh, sliced apple wedge, right? The only way that you can eat that apple wedge is if it was perfectly sliced by, you know, an open L blade. Well, sorry, you, you just, I guess you're not going to get the enjoyment out of that apple slice, right? But uh, no, it's a, it's totally reasonable for EDC. In fact, it's going to cut better than most, um, given that it is fully flat ground. And it's, it's very sharp. Um, this is a, a Riot Edge, and it's perfect. There's no issues whatsoever. Everything else is nicely round down, nice tip. Um, this is going to be, uh, this is going to excel at uh, any puncture tasks, and it's, it's going to do pretty good at your cutting tasks. It's also a very, very comfortable knife. The pocket clip, you can feel it, but I'm not going to call it a hot spot. You're going to cut for 30 minutes at a time with it. Yeah, you're definitely going to, it's definitely going to bother you, but for quick cuts, no big deal. I really like where they put the jimping on the spine. It's not back here, right? Because this, this feels a little weird. This feels a little more normal. I mean, if, if I'm going to cut into a box, I'm not going to put my hand here, but I'm not going to put my thumb up here. I'm going to do it like this, right? Or I'm going to do it like this. But if I'm, if I need to do some precision work up against, you know, like wood or whatever, I'm making kindling, I guess, for a fire. Yeah, I like that the bracing point is up here because the blade doesn't rise. There's no slope, you know, it allows your thumb to dig in. So it's nice that the, this is just a more natural feeling bracing point. It doesn't matter if you're back here or if you're choked up, either way. I kind of like that. I, I kind of like to see that on more knives. Um, the black tumbling on this looks really, really good. Beautiful up against the, uh, the bronze, um, what I'm assuming is a titanium pivot collar. Really nice. There is a lanyard hole back here for people who like lanyards, and I love the style of the backspacer. It's nice. It's got some extra angles, a little jimping right there. It's just ever so slightly raised up above the scale, so you can make use of the jimping. Um, the pocket clip is not prioritized whatsoever over the lanyard hole. So unfortunately, we have this much of the knife sticking up out of your pocket. Why? Why did you do that? Why are, why are those things, why is the screw in this lanyard hole being emphasized above the pocket clip? The pocket clip looks cool, and it does kind of go along with the, uh, with the knife. It's um, got plenty of retention. There's plenty of material here. It is made out of titanium. It slips in and out of the pocket easily. It's going to be that way in jeans or, you know, sweatpants as I'm wearing right now. You know, not a knife I'd carry around in athletic shorts, but yeah, it's, it's going to be just fine. But why? On such a slender knife that I, I feel like... You know, it's been the, the main benefit of this is that getting so much um, usable cutting edge and so much, you know, excess handle to really grab onto and such a slender, easy to carry profile, it should be a little deeper. It doesn't have to be fully deep carry, but I mean, seriously, that much is sticking out of your pocket. Why? It's fine. It'll stay in your pocket. It's just annoying. Just don't emphasize this kind of stuff like the Everybody wants to put a pocket knife in their pocket and use the clip right? Um, even those weird people who clip it to where like the knife hangs outside of your pocket. Why do you guys do that? <laughs> that's so weird. Sorry, that's mean. If you want to, that's fine. If you want to carry it like that, it seems like a good way to get stolen. But yeah, not everybody uses a lanyard. In fact, very few people use lanyards. So that's weird. I, I don't know why that's that way. It's fine. It's not a deal breaker. It's just frustrating. It does have a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop. This knife locks up super solid at about 25% 
absolutely no blade play up, down, left, or right. And the blade is, as per usual, with Riot knives, perfectly centered. This is a wonderful knife. So again, what things can I complain about? Um, you can kind of, it's not a double clutch. This thing has the potential to slip past your finger. Not a big deal. Oh, forgot to mention. Um, this has uh, an internal stop pin that rides with the blade. So it actually is kind of like the, uh, the stops on an XM18 that uh, brace on either side of the frame rather than the entire blade resting on a stop pin. I think that's a better, I think the way that this is done is better because it does mitigate in a situation where you're using the knife aggressively, it does mitigate pressure away from the pivot. So that's good in my opinion. Um, so that's nice, but um, yeah, the flipper tab can slip over your finger a little bit. Um, why is the pocket clip um, not prioritized over the backspacer? That's it's very odd. Um, I, I don't know. I don't understand. This is not a nitpick, but gosh, this knife would look so clean without the logo. Um, yeah, I I also would kind of like a, a, an option for this to be textured, but it's not necessarily something that has to be done. This is a great knife, and it's made by Riot. Um, Riot tends to. I know a lot of people who you know, know Riyadh, know their prices, or we're immediately like, oh, what's it gonna cost? Because Riyadh really likes the 300 to $500 range, don't they? Well, for a lot of people, this is still gonna be too much money. Especially, you know, the first thing you're gonna say is, it's not manufactured in the United States, I'm never gonna pay that, that's fine. And don't, don't buy it, go buy something else. You don't have to buy it. Um, for a Riyadh knife, for those of you who have handled or, and or owned Riyadh knives, and you know their reputation for quality, and you know the prices they generally ask. This is coming in fairly reasonable at $265 roughly. I was pretty surprised to find out, you know, that uh, this, this Riot made knife was not over $300. That being said, it's still quite a bit of money. And this isn't the, the most overly complex knife. Um, I don't think it's an amazing price. I do think it's an amazing price for, for a Riot, knowing that and taking a look at the little details, you know, that, that's great. It's still not, you know, for this knife, there's a lot of knives that you can get that are M390 and titanium that have nearly indistinguishable um, differences in overall quality and fit and finish. And you can get those knives sometimes for between 200 and 240. So do I think it's a fair price? I think it's a fair price. Do I think it's, you know, like, oh my gosh, it's overpriced. No, not at all. It's fair price, right? It's just not blowing my mind, but boy, the knife is beautiful. Man, I'll tell you what, if that pocket clip, if that pocket clip weren't set like that, this would have really, really been, you know, mind blowing. Again, keep in mind, you really have to adjust to a slimmer knife. You know, if you, you've been carrying slimmer knives like these, right? ZTO 450 and other <coughs> similar designs, you know, you kind of know where to put your hands, but you do have to make an adjustment. Because on other frame locks, a lot of times, full-size frame locks, you got more room to put your hand. So you're either going to have to adjust, migrate to the pocket clip, or you're going to have to learn to really cat's paw back here. And, you know, sometimes that adjustment period, you know, uh, results in you dropping your knife. So just be careful. But the action's great. This knife is very, very well designed. It's got great ergonomics. And if you like a slim carry knife, but you still want to have a full-size knife, right, that looks good, this is going to be for you. So yes, I can recommend this knife. This will be going on my most recommended knives playlist. Again, uh, Hunter L, thank you so much for sending this guy along. Guys, that's going to be pretty much it for today's upload. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this metal complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.